Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream session and today we've got another real railway profile for you. We'll be taking a closer look at the Great Western Railway King class locomotives introduced in the late 1920s running on the Great Western Railway and of course the Western region of British Railways for over 35 years and transforming some of the services that they operated on. We'll be discovering the history of the real life locomotives, working through the reasons why they were built and what they provided to the Great Western Railway Network, as well as their lives in preservation too. And of course, looking at some of the models that we have available right now, either from the past or the present super detail releases. If there's anything in particular you'd like to know, if you're watching live, please do put a comment on the stream and I'll answer as many questions as I can throughout the show. Otherwise, if you're watching a little later, feel free to comment on the video or get in touch with our customer experience team who will be more than happy to help you out. So what's the story behind these of the largest Great Western locomotives? Why were they built? Why were they constructed? We have to go back a little bit before the story of the King starts. We have to go right back to the early 1920s, where the Great Western Railway was still at the forefront of development of the 460 passenger locomotive. We'd seen locomotives such as the Saint and the Star Class Locos handling most of the expresses on the Great Western Railway right up to the grouping in 1923. But other railways were starting to catch up with more modern and more powerful designs too. The Great Northern Railway had just become the London North Eastern Railway, as well as a couple of other companies, and introduced their A1 class Pacific locomotives. The various companies that formed the London Midland Scottish Railway had started to build their own 460 Express passenger locomotives immediately prior to the grouping. And the Southern Railway was on with constructing locomotives such as the King Arthur class 460s. The Great Western wasn't being left behind here though, and a new locomotive was required for working some of the services on the Western region. And this was the Castle class locomotive, which was developed and introduced in 1923. These were a far more powerful locomotive than any of the Great Western 460s than had gone before, but this did come at a cost. They were right at the top of the maximum axle loading and weight that the Great Western Railway could have on its express passenger locomotives. And this did limit the size of the locomotives that were built. The castles were a hugely successful design and we will be covering them on their own in a separate video, but they didn't quite have what it takes to match up to some of the other locomotives being developed. Although they were the most powerful locomotive in Britain in their construction in 1923, by just three years later, this title had fallen to the brand new Lord Nelson locomotives being built for the Southern Railway. So the Great Western's general manager really wanted to keep hold of the most powerful loco in Britain title. So Charles Collett, the chief mechanical engineer of the Great Western Railway, was authorised to look at ways to build a super castle locomotive, really upgrade the castle class and aim for £40,000 of tractive effort. This was completely unheard of within the UK and pretty much across the world at this time, with those brand new Lord Nelson locomotives having just £33,000 of tractive effort, which again was a fantastic figure for 1926 and shows you just how hard the Kings were pushed to get a most powerful design developed. So the development started in 1926 with Charles Collett working alongside his future successor, Hawksworth, who also collaborated on this particular design. A lot of work on the routes of the Great Western Railway was undertaken in this period and a lot of the bridges upgraded to allow the axle load and the weight of the locomotives to be higher. This increased from 19 tonnes per axle to 22 tonnes per axle. What this means is we can have a larger and more powerful locomotive here. And this design really was crammed into the 460 design that we see here with a brand new type of boiler constructed specifically for these locomotives. Larger cylinders than had ever seen been seen before on a Great Western locomotive and also a boiler pressure of 250 PSI. Again, something that was relatively unheard of when it comes to 1920s locomotives. So these locomotives were started to be constructed. 
The first was started and commissioned in late 1926, arriving onto the tracks in early 1927. This locomotive was number 6000, the first of the King class, although they might not have been kings at all if other people would have had their way. The initial plan was to name these locomotives after cathedrals based in cities on the Great Western Railways network and perhaps further afield, but the 1920s publicity machine wanted a more prestigious name for these brand new, most powerful locomotives coming onto the network, regaining that title of most powerful locomotive to run in Britain, and the King class was born. Number 6000, the first in the class, was named after King George V, the current monarch, and then the names for the locomotives headed back through history from there. The first six were delivered in 1927, with 15 more locomotives being delivered almost weekly between February and July 1928. So these locomotives are coming onto stream. As you can see here in this splendid GWR Brunswick Green livery with the lettering and the garter crest of the time. And you can see the, the huge size difference between these particular locomotives and the items that you can see here. So you've got the, the larger bogey truck at the front with its full bracing, something that wasn't really seen on many great Western locomotives until these came through with the first of the class coming into service in June 1927 officially. So this locomotive was launched and they were made for the crack express duties of the Great Western Railway. Although a lot of the network had been upgraded with brand new bridges, these locomotives were quite limited on where they could operate within the Great Western network. And initially they were deployed on services, the express duties running from London Paddington to either Plymouth, heading on the Cornish Riviera Express across the South Devon banks from Exeter and through places like Bristol and Taunton, and also on the route through Vista, heading up towards Birmingham and Wolverhampton on the Great Western Railway network there too. They were an immediate success, although they were quite a hungry design. They really did need the ultimate treatment from their locomotive crews with the sheer amount of steam that they could use. But excellent driving and firing were rewarded, and these locomotives really lived up to the hype when it came to the power that they could produce. So much so that the publicity machine went even further in 1927 and number 6000 was invited to head to America for the centenary of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, showing one of the brand new British locomotives at the time alongside past and present US designs of locomotive two. This headed over in August 1927. You can see here it was fully polished for the occasion and fully, I believe it had a minor overhaul too, just to make sure it was in tip top condition for it arriving in the States where it spent a couple of months. As you can see here, posed with a figure of Britannia on the side of the locomotive. This was used quite heavily as part of the centenary celebrations and the locomotive gained a commemorative bell and capside plaques from its participation in this event that it still carries to this day. It wasn't only a visit for marketing though, as a lot of developments on the locomotives and a lot of things trialed on the King design were implemented by the Baltimore and Ohio Railway on some of its steam locomotives in the 1930s too. So a lot of design, discussion, shall we say, took place in that visit in 1927 too. So we saw further kings coming into service. We saw more members of the class there. We had 20 by the end of 1928, again, all named after various kings throughout history of the UK, with more coming onto the scene, giving us 30 in total by 1930. All of them were constructed at GWR Swindon Works, as we can see here, with a production line of these locomotives remaining for around three years or so. So they were still formed on a lot of those different duties and they really were successful over the first five or six years or so of their lives. We didn't really see any big changes until around 1935. The locomotive settled in, in the initial color schemes that we see here, but some of those changes started to happen in the mid 1930s. 
the locos were still working on the main express duties of the Great Western, we started to see the shirt button collar scheme that we see here on these particular locomotives coming through there too. Unfortunately, some good and bad news in 1935 and 1936 saw some changes to these locomotives with one locomotive, number 6015, Richard III, trial streamlined in 1935. So this had some streamlining fitted to replicate the streamlining that was being carried out on locomotives for the London Midland Scottish and the London North Eastern Railways at the time. Unfortunately, this wasn't quite as successful. It purely was for marketing purposes and it did not get a good customer reaction. So this was very quickly removed and photos of the locomotive in this condition are understandably quite rare too. But it did retain its streamlined cab for a number of years afterwards. But the main streamlined casing on the front and the top of the locomotive was removed very quickly indeed. Heading over into 1936, and unfortunately, we lost one of the King locomotives in a crash. Number 6007 was lost in a crash in early 1936. It was deemed beyond economic repair. However, a replacement was commissioned and in traffic by March. This really quick turnaround was enabled by the fact that we had so many spares that could be used from the original locomotive and of course Swindon was still building a lot of parts for these locomotives too so they were able to turn out a brand new locomotive to fill the gap with the same name and number within two months we also had two renamings on these locomotives at the time with 6028 and 6029 being renamed at the time. There was various changes in the royal family in 1936 in the UK with two new kings crowned in the same year. So number 6029 became King Edward VIII from King Stephen and King Henry II, which was 6028, became King George VI when King George VI claimed the throne in, in later in 1936. So that was the only renamings for the class to honour the current kings that had come in in 1936. All the other locomotives there retained their current names until withdrawal later on. So the loco settled down into quite a steady existence, even throughout the Second World War period. They were still retained on those crack express duties running into the West Midlands and into the southwest of England too. Unfortunately, more and more routes started to head back below that axle loading, so they didn't quite get as far as they wanted to, especially with the less amount of wartime repairs on the railway, so they were a little bit restricted in where they could go, and some of the plans to upgrade the routes in the late 1930s and 1940s never took place due to the Second World War too. But the locomotive soldiered on and entered British Rail service in 1948 with the nationalisation of the railways. Many of the locomotives were painted in a deep ultramarine colour, changing from the Great Western's Brunswick Green for the first time there. And then several of the locomotives were also painted in the BR Express Passenger Blue. By the mid-1950s, the majority of locomotives had changed back into BR's own representation of the green livery, which was very similar to the Great Western colour scheme that had gone before. And now BR started to improve the class as well with some upgrades coming from them. We can see here on this particular model some of the major changes that have been taken to the class with changes to the steam pipes and the buffers implemented from the 1930s to the 1940s. But the main change that we see here is the installation of the double blast pipe and double chimney on top of the locomotives too. This was trialled in 1955 by British Rail to improve the steaming quality of the locomotives and improve the efficiency there too. And it was such a successful makeover that all 30 of the locomotives did have this improvement added to them. So all of them remaining in service with BR and in heavily improved the performance, especially on the steep parts of the routes that they worked on, including the banks in the southwest of England between Exeter and Plymouth. 
Unfortunately, there was still no route upgrade, so they couldn't get any further than the routes they had operated on, heading again up to Birmingham, Wolverhampton, and as far as Plymouth in the southwest of England. They couldn't get to Cornwall with one or two bridges on the way, not being able to take the weight of these particular locomotives. So they carried on through BR service. However, they were pretty much switched off in 1962. The advent of the new Western hydraulic diesel locomotives saw these express locomotives working right through to 1962 on some of the main duties on the routes they have become well known for. As you can see here on some of the titled express trains that they ran across the region, However, by the end of 1962, all the locomotives had been withdrawn from service, as we see here, fully replaced by a brand new Western Hydraulic Diesel locomotive fleet. Many of them went to scrap. Many of them quite quickly went to scrap, actually, with several being scrapped at their birthplace of Swindon. However, three have survived with us, one in the National Railway Museum at York, one owned by the Great Western Society and one privately owned too. And we can look at those in a little bit more detail with number 6000 being privately preserved initially, but being the first locomotive other than the Flying Scotsman to return to service on the British Railway Network in 1971. So just, after, just three years after the final services on British Rail in 1968, powered by steam locomotives, Number 6000 became the locomotive that broke the steam ban and returned mainline steam workings to the UK in 1971. It did operate for quite a few years in the 1970s and 1980s and since has been placed in both the National Railway Museum at York as it forms part of the National Collection and also the Steam Great Western Railway Museum in the former Swindon Works Complex too. So appropriately, it has been back to its birthplace quite a few times. If you do see it out there on display, you will see it in its final condition as withdrawn with the double chimney, but carrying most importantly, the bell and the plaques from its visit to America nearly 100 years ago, now commemorating the original event. So this international superstar is a locomotive that you can see there as an important part of the national collection. 6023 King Edward II also survives, and this is a locomotive owned and operated by the Great Western Railway Society at Didcot. As of the time of recording this video, it's just completed 10 years in service in its distinctive BR Express Passenger Blue colour scheme. It's been operated on several preserved lines across the country and now is in its queue for being fixed again and overhauled and being put back out there on the railways. So you can see many photos of that during its last service. It was restored from pretty much a rusting hulk, to be quite honest with you, where many parts had been cut up or scrapped, but it was a huge overhaul effort that took over 25 years, and this locomotive fully returned to service and is once again waiting to be fixed up and returned to the rails. Finally, we have 6024, which is another King Edward. This is a locomotive that's now privately owned by the Icons of Steam company, but has been owned by a number of different operators throughout the years. It's been a regular fixture on mainline rail tours with some amendments to its bodywork to allow it to work on further routes across the UK off the former Great Western region of British Railways. There, So you could see this locomotive on rail tours heading up into the north and the northeast of England, certainly in the 1990s and early 2000s. I believe at the time of recording that locomotive is coming towards the end of its overhaul. So very soon indeed, we should have a King back in operation on the tracks. And this would show you just how important a design these were for the Great Western Railway achieving that power restriction there with the amount of restrictions that they had on the network, sorry, achieving the amount of power with 40,000 pounds of horsepower, their attractive effort being capable of. So the locomotives were built, an immediately successful design running right through the 1950s and 1960s with three showcasing themselves in preservation to today. Taking a quick look at the models, 
We've got a variety of models available right now covering past and present designs in double O gauge. Hornby, of course, introduced their King right back in the late 1970s and have released several revised toolings ever since, with a brand new tooling coming through in the early 1980s, the late 1980s, the early 2000s, and finally 2015, with a brand new Loco Drive super detail model that we see here on the screen. This has been released in around eight to nine different variations so far, with lots of different versions available to pick up and tooling differences there too, covering the difference is in these locomotives throughout their lives with single chimney variations, double chimney variations, different buffers and steam pipes, and of course the all important BR smoke box number plate on the BR liveried locomotives too. We have a number of these available in the Great Western colour schemes at the moment, and they are available from time to time in the BR colour schemes too. So head over to the link in the description where there is more information on those. Lima did introduce one of their rarer steam locomotives in the late 1970s too. This only got around two or three separate releases, but it was part of their catalogue for around five or six years before they mainly concentrated on bringing through classic diesel locomotives in their collection. But again, you can pick those up from time to time as part of our pre-owned selection, as can Engage modelers who can pick up locomotives from the Graham Farish range. It's not as detailed a model as the current Hornby models in double O gauge, but you will find Engage Kings out there too. And I believe a new tooling version is underway from a company called KR Models. So you can have a look for those online and find out more details on the brand new King coming through there too. So that shows you a lot of the models that we have already. You can pick up a fantastic model, whether you're looking for a model on a budget or you're looking for a real amount of detail in these locomotives. If you want to follow that link in the description to find out more information there, you'll find out all the kings that we have available, including deliveries, the running numbers and names, and of course, the all important specification, including couplings, minimum radius, and DCC capability too. But there are some great opportunities to get a king on your layout. It really does commemorate one of the most successful Great Western Railway designs, and certainly the most powerful Great Western Railway locomotive ever built, and also the most powerful 460 locomotive ever produced for the UK railway network. There were one or two more locomotives built later that were more powerful than this, but these were all Pacific designs. So this really is as far as the 460 story goes when it comes to UK's railways. And indeed, these are arguably the ultimate in 460 locomotive design. You can see here again some of the important parts of the lives of these locomotives heading through here as we see with the importance of the loco heading over to America to commemorate the centenary of one of the first railroads in North America. And finally, the importance again of that exact same locomotive breaking the steam ban in 1971 and returning mainline steam to the UK's railways for the first time in three years. And it's been there ever since too. So this really was a locomotive and a design that had many firsts indeed. And it's well worth celebrating as a classic of GWR design. So I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Kings today. If you do want to find out more or you've got any particular questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with our customer experience team or put a note in the video below, put a note on the comments, and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have there too. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page, where we have more great videos like this, including real railway profiles, model railway skills cast sessions, and of course, all the latest model railway news too. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.